to the amazing response of episode one. We thought long and hard about how the viewer could get to know Greg on a more personal level. So, two friends sitting in front of the fire chatting, completely unedited. What he does, he blows my mind up. Coffee with the King. So, we've refilled our coffee. Mm -hmm. We put another log on the fire. Yep. Which isn't doing that well, actually. <laughs> and uh, let's see what we're going to talk about next. Yeah, yeah. So, I was getting some questions from the audience uh, <laughs> as to meeting Donald Trump on the steps of the Parthenon. Yeah, this is... A and people keep asking about it. It's kind of, you know, it's not something I'm sort of going out to say, to say, you know, in a big way. It's just something that happened while I was in, I was in Boston and then our um, esoteric CIA, they do have an esoteric division, arranged to meet me in Athens and then I had a meeting with the daughter of a two-star general and she said, are you Kronos? And Kronos is uh, the right to rule the world and it was being handed out to people at that time. And I didn't know how to reply. and I actually didn't say anything. I kind of didn't know what it was. I thought it was something to do with time, you know, maybe yeah, yeah. father of Zeus or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that night I went to the steps of the Parthenon and you just stand out there. The Greek people just stand on the steps and get the breeze, look at people, talk if you want to, and look at the view. Yeah. And the steps are about 15 metres wide and across from the other side of the steps appeared to be Donald Trump at that age and he had two men in kind of American European suits standing either side of him. He came over, standing about two and a half steps above me and he's, he's you know, about a bit he's taller a big than fella, me. He's a big fella, yeah. you know, he's like 6'3 yeah, or something. Yeah. 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 And he's he's telling me what he's going to do but he's, he's like imbuing me with the information, right? He's talking to my chest, if you know what I mean. Yeah? You know what I mean? When someone's actually, you yeah. know, the uncle's telling you this is how it is. Yeah. yeah. So he's doing that to me and I'm sort of going like this, you know. And um, then after that, this Czech CIA took me to Patmos. Where's that? That's day. a Patmos, Greek island. It's a Greek island about, it's off Turkey. It's about 60 metres, 60 miles south of Ephesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I've been there. I know to, where that is, yeah. Then they took me to Ephesus and to all the Christian sites around Turkey. Yeah including the Hagia Sophia. So in Patmos, they were saying, you know, do you feel anything? Do you feel anything? You mean, do you feel anything about the spirit, the, the atmosphere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I later found out, I didn't know at the time, that um, uh, Revelation, which is the last chapter in the Bible, was purportedly written in Patmos. Ah. Right? And I, I said, look, I didn't feel anything. And from <laughs> what I found out since is they were taking a few people to Patmos, it's the Czech CIA, to see if they were the one who had either written Revelation or who Revelation was about, huh. right? And I didn't feel anything. And it was only 25 years later that I actually found out where Revelation was written. And and and, and then and, and and then that was 2013, 14. And then um, it wasn't written in in, in Greece. No, 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 it was written in, in the Old Garden. Ah. Um, which is also known as the Garden. Um, and that's, yeah, so, and that's where the End Times Palace was as well, um, which is also called Carvalhiel Palace, which is also called Stoy Palace. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually written Estoy. And I believe that Estoy, que Estoy is Spanish for I am that I am. Yeah, Estoy. Yeah, it's I am. I am. Yeah. So, you know, the famous line in the Bible, the Shakespearean line, I am that I am, yeah. actually named Estoy Palace. And that was hugely connected to the end times. Hmm. Um, Which so, you've mentioned that this is where we are. Well, I ended up being chosen the next year to represent the end times, and then which lasts 40 days. And I've codified all the numbers on a chart, which I can give you. And then I was also chosen to represent the new age, which is the highest honor. And I'd been running the Shin, or Forbidden Secret, since 1980, which kind of gave me control of the British royal family. So I could do things and that they would then react to it. And that led to the disastrous marriage of um, Charles and Diana. I can't get my head round. It's very difficult to imagine such a huge responsibility, a huge task that you've got. You just come over very, okay, it's what I'm doing. You know, you don't seem worried, you, you know, you walk around, you're very jolly, happy. You have no, you just, you've accepted it. 
Yeah, I, well, uh, you know, people pump accolades on me and I'm going, oh, that's great, you know, whatever. I'm doing it anyway, I feel like this. And then occasionally I go, am I really? <laughs> you know, is it actually me? You know. Yeah, I'm sure you must and, feel a bit of being humble about it as well. Well, I, you know, I've had some big announcements while I've been working with this crew. Yeah, yeah, you we, know, just yeah. huge, huge yeah. announcements, and it's just, it's just level for me. There's no ego rise or anything. It's yeah. just level because I've been put in the most humble situations for the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, blacklisted and stuff like that. So. Um, well, you know, I just don't, I just don't have the, the kind of super ego that goes with it. It's just me. This is what I do, and I kind of I've been trained um, in um, how do I put it symbols and royal marks, but not through any organisation like you know Freemasons, Illuminati, Rosicrucian, whatever the others are. I so don't you, belong to any of them. Uh, I've never I've never been to their temples. You know, all of my initiations have been natural. Yeah. So, you know, when people show me royal marks or religious marks, a lot of them I get straight away. I understand them. Mm -hmm. And I've ended up with some of the most powerful royal marks in the British Empire and in North America. And so what, one, of the, one of my responsibilities is to join kingdoms, join nations and join time. See, th this is something that comes up a lot. People are saying, you know, do we really need a new king? Because... They associate the word king with power and dominance and control. And I've noticed with me getting questions like that. So it could be something worth explaining this, I think. Yeah, a lot of people say, oh, do I have to give over all of my power to you now that you're king? That's just, it's just so wrong, you know? Yeah. For a start, they never had any power to give. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give away something you, know you don't have. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and, and that's not what kingship's about. It's actually a service position. Like the word Lord actually means to do whatever is required in the moment. Uh -huh. That's what Lord means. I didn't and know if, that. if you go through the Bible for if you go through the Bible for specific things, you know, you it says in the beginning, it says, In the beginning was the logos. And oh, so that's in the beginning was the word, which means in the beginning was the definitions of the word. So you've got to define all the words. Yeah. And, um, but Logos actually means saying. So in the beginning was the sayings, which is sayings of reality. And at the moment, we're living in a non-reality. And so we're moving from the previous age of Pisces into the new age of Aquarius. And we are creating our re reality and demanding our reality, our new reality. So I'm getting all these love bombs. You know, it seems yeah. that the age of Aquarius is the age of just love bombs. Like the song. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. Seventy song. Um, Great song, by the I way. Mean, yeah. We should put we, it on. We used to have parties at the house and the, um, our, our, our music teacher at primary school used to come over and play it. Play and we'd be standing around drinking, singing along. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else? I, I mean, when you, after a full on day of doing everything that, that's been going on now. Yeah. And then you get up in the morning. I mean, is it not like you get out of bed and you say, oh, God, here we go again? It must be exciting, though. Is it like every day there's something new? There's a little bit more, a little bit you're advancing, getting closer and closer and closer? That's what it seems to me the last couple of days. Well, it's around. been great having a film crew around for that. I mean, yeah. you know, that's a huge affirmation. Yeah. Not only that, is, you know, we've been working intensely for about four days. Yeah. And no one's ever shouted bullshit, you know? No. You know, and, you know what I mean? I'm, like, you're a big burly fellow. The, the other guy's a big burly Lee. fellow. You, you, you're big fighters in that. And, <laughs> no, you know, he is. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of um, burly real men, you know? Yeah. And you just, you just ask more, and they tell you more, and you get a bit more activated. You yeah. integrate a bit more. You go off and have a chat by yourselves. Yeah, yeah, go, yeah. No, so I, this isn't bullshit. I, you know? Well, you, you, you <laughs> have this blowing. You blow people's minds are like that. The information that you're giving. By the, see, what happens is you'll hit me with something yeah. and then I'll go, okay, and I'm processing it. And yeah. then you've already advanced yeah. five or six points. I'm going, okay, okay, okay. So really, yeah. you need someone walking behind me with notes. But yeah. it's taken me a good couple of days to get it, yeah. I, I have to admit. So, yeah. But the amount of knowledge you've had, what do you do for fun? I mean, what do you do to relax? You can't surely be doing all of this 24, seven days a week. You must uh, do something to relax. You watch a bit of TV, for example. Uh, I go for a guy and help walk his dog. Yeah, you like that? And just talk absolute nonsense. <laughs> total nonsense. The more nonsense we can come up with, yeah. you know, other people listening in go, well, why are these guys on? Right? <laughs> just absolute rubbish. And then I go and pack the horses, feed them a bit of grass. If the apples are in season, I'll get them some apples. 
And uh, yeah, just walk around doing nothing. Because you must, sort of stuff. you've got to have that escapism to take yourself out of it, you know? Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I can take you on an escapism tour if you like. You know, um, I saw in amongst all of this, you had some books. How many books have you written? 15. 15. That's a lot. How, how, yeah. Over how many years? Uh, 20. 20 years. Yeah. I wrote four books in one year. One of them was called How to Take Over the World, A Right Royal Con. A right, I, a right royal con? Yeah. And I exposed how Queen Victoria's second husband, Prince Consort Albert, was actually the son of the stable boy, Alex Hanstein, and he had no titles. He was just Albert of Saxony, and he wasn't Albert of Saxon, Coburg and Gotha. And he was chosen because he was identical to Queen Victoria's first husband, Blind Prince George of Cumberland. Yeah. I am. Who was the second in line to the throne. Yeah. All right, so, so yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah. There's a, see, it's exactly what I'm talking about. He does yeah. that all the time to you. <laughs> he, he he puts this in your head and then you're processing it and he's already halfway down the road by then. Yeah. Um, have you been working on a book at the moment? Have you had time for that? All of my books have been blacklisted. Really? Like, if you write a raw book, all of the raw books are, how would you put it, um, commissioned PR pieces. Yeah. You know, except for maybe um, Morton's book on Diana that was privately commissioned by Diana. Um, so when you actually tell the truth of the British royal family for the last 200 years, it's a mafia gangster movie full of illegitimacy. They tried to steal our royal marks, like Prince Philip sent an agent down, or actually he was, he was around in Portugal, a guy called Joseph, and they sent him in to steal some royal marks. So we had the um, the signet ring of the Holy Roman Emperor, and it was being cleaned. Yeah, you know, who's the King King George V of Hanover, the Blind Prince George of Cumberland, Queen Victoria's first husband, and so the signet was actually off, and there was just the ring. Yeah, and um, Prince Philip's agent stole the ring, but not the actual seal. Not the signet. Not the seal, but the significant part. Yeah. So we we kept the the signet. And well, you, you never then, got it back? Then this, this guy, Joseph, went and took this ring to uh, Prince Philip, and mm. then he got a job as a barman in the Navy uh, for the rest of his life, and, and, a, and a flat place to live for just one little theft. But you never got that back, the ring? No. No? No. But we've got the signet. That's actually the cover of the book. So we've got the signet there, and we put some um, sellotape behind it and then held it up to the sunlight yeah. and, and just angled it gently and took photos so that turns us from, turns from orange to tan to brown, dark brown to light yellow gold. Mm -hmm. And then we used to fool the covers. Are you a good rider, horse rider? I forgot to ask you that a second ago. Um, um, I can stay on. <laughs> That's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, I've, got, I've actually got a um, double, double European champion to Teach me horse riding. Uh, but do you have any, do, is that something that you have time for? I hope so. <laughs> well, you know, if it works out, that'll be what I do in my time off. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, I'm so English because I love the dogs and horses. Yeah. You know? Wandering around the countryside and the Land Rover and the dogs and horses. Yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, I think New Zealand has a, a similar climate, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it's also got a culture of, you know, horses and dogs. Yeah. 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 And sheep, of course. Yeah, all called Susan. <laughs> so, um, one of the other questions we had, Jamie, from the, uh, we had another one. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Um, sorry, guys, I'm just talking to the crew. They're helping me. They've got the questions written down. Um, was about, uh, 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 it was about, oh, yeah, this thing. It, oh, well, I'll just butt in here. Go on. New Zealand is in a personal union, is a personal union country with the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. That means that someone from New Zealand is allowed to become the king or ah. the monarch of the United Kingdom. It's a bit like you have to be born in the USA to be president, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Not that they hold to that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, um, I was going to say about. Um, personal sacrifices. We had an email from somebody in Canada who was saying, mm. Greg seems to have um, endured personal sacrifices in his personal life um, to achieve yeah. this mission. Yeah, oh, it's totally everything, just everything. So I had a reasonably successful architecture practice for 22 years. Um, I was only ever allowed to work for four and a half years, a paid income, the rest of the time I was working 
the courts, which is the Queen and Prince Philip's courts, mm -hmm. were actually employing people to employ me to not pay um, with license from the courts to be found not guilty of not paying. You know, so it was actually, I was actually having to pay to go to work. It was costing me money rather than receive money. So they did, and they blew up my cars and stuff, and I had 18 assassination attempts, 12 in New Zealand. <laughs> and I ended up taking the president of the Law Society in Auckland, New Zealand, to court, to the High Court, and exposing him as Prince Philip's agent, which he admitted to in the High Court. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So hey. Prince Philip was actually employing heroin traffickers to distribute heroin to target the true royal families around the world. So Yeah, you mentioned you know, that just, earlier. This no, it's nasty stuff. <clears throat> yeah. the, only, the only reason they would do that is if the British royal family knew that they were flat like royal and illegitimate and there were true royals from further back. Sure. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you've got yeah. somebody else's threat, you're gonna yeah. take them out. But eighteen assassination attempts, I mean yeah. are you bulletproof or what? I mean Yes, I am. <laughs> Well, they all, well, it's too long a story to get into all of those, yeah. I'm sure that. There's many stories with you, Greg, that need time and devotion to get the whole story down. Yeah, yeah. You're a very, very complex character, but fun. I actually, thanks. I, I actually think I'm a simpleton, <laughs> you know, because I, you know, and because you, you live your life and share your stories, like you're sharing your stories and we're all going, wow, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not going to mention my story after that. <laughs> you know, you're a hard act really? to follow. <laughs> yeah, no, you got some excellent stories, but mine are better. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's all about learning from your experiences. What do you say to me? Yeah. You say, Fate is a series of stumbles. You've just got to have the strength to get up. And yeah, every time, and then that's your destination. Yeah. Yeah, and the bigger the destination, the more the stumbles, you know? So... I've got um, about... That's, that's, yeah. I've got about 20 really good quotes I'm going to use now when I go back in, a, in amongst my life, you know? Yeah, what I'm saying, you yeah. Know, that yeah. one I like very much about fate. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind me using No, that. no, go ahead. Just don't <laughs> quote me. I might have borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> On July the 9th, 2020, Joseph Gregory Hallett signed the final declaration to take control of the throne of the United Kingdom. Mr. John Smith, head of common law courts in England and 23 independent witnesses, signed this historic document. This now means that the Crown has 21 days to contest all of the points laid out in these legal documents. When I asked Greg if the royal family would contest this claim, he answered simply, she can't because I proved that she's on the throne illegitimately. Unfortunately, We've come to the end of our first series of interviews, The Hidden King with Joseph Gregory Hallett. But the information that Greg retains about biblical prophecies, world historical events, and the real truth about the royal family needs to be documented. I hope that we've helped you connect in your own personal way with Greg during these interviews. And you feel what many people feel. He's a man on a very special journey, but we have so much more to learn from him.